Welcome to the UK Travel Planning Podcast. Your host is the founder of the UK Travel Planning website, Tracy Collins. In this podcast, Tracy shares destination guides, travel tips, and itinerary ideas, as well as interviews with a variety of guests who share their knowledge and experience of UK travel to help you plan your perfect UK vacation. Join us as we explore the UK from cosmopolitan cities to quaint villages, from historic castles to beautiful islands, and from the picturesque countryside to seaside towns. Hi and welcome to episode 43 of the UK Travel Planner Podcast. In this week's episode, I'm talking again to Doug and this week we're going to be talking about UK train travel and in particular, we're going to be answering 15 of the most frequently asked questions about train travel in the UK. So we do have rather a lot of podcasts already um, about train travel in the UK and I will kind of mention those as we go along. Um, And I also will just mention at this point is that we have got a guide to UK train travel ebook, uh, which Doug and I wrote and is available to purchase via the website. I will put link in the show notes. But I thought I will just mention that if you've got further questions after this episode, it's probably worth popping over and having a look at the ebook. And also we have a Facebook group as well, UK Train Travel Tips, that is worth joining. But anyway, without further ado, let's welcome Doug back to the podcast. Hi, Doug. Hello there. It's great for you to come back and talk about train travel because I know you would happily talk about train travel <laughs> forever. Um, uh, and uh, we do enjoy, we obviously enjoy train travel. With your expert knowledge, I thought this would be a really good episode to do because we get so many questions Mm, in the Facebook group and so many emails about um, train travel in the UK. So these are the 15 most commonly asked questions um, in the Facebook group and via email. So we're going to start uh, with the first question, uh, which is how do I get from Heathrow Airport by train to King's Cross Railway Station? Okay, well, you have several options. Firstly, the tube that's the london underground you can take the piccadilly line it starts at Heathrow, and it'll take you all the way to king's cross that's the easy one it's the cheapest option there is other ones there's the elizabeth line which um which is pretty new that will take you uh, from one side of london to the other so from Heathrow, and you have to change trains on uh, tottenham court road for that one and catch the northern uh, northern line tube line and that takes you to king's cross Yep. And the third option, train option, is the Heathrow Express, the train which takes you from Heathrow to London Paddington train station, and then you've got a couple of tube changes uh, before you get to King's Cross. Okay, so obviously the, the most direct route to take is from Heathrow is the Piccadilly Line. It is yeah. the Piccadilly okay. Line, yes. Okay. So that's worth filing that away for any of you who are going to arrive at Heathrow and will be heading over to King's Cross Station. The next question, uh, which kind of relates to this as well, is how much time do I need to allow from landing at Heathrow Airport to booking a train from King's Cross to Edinburgh? Now, before Doug jumps in to answer this question, I am just going to say that we are recording a dedicated podcast specifically to answer the question, how to get from Heathrow to Edinburgh, because we get asked that so often. So although Doug's going to answer this question now in terms of how much time you need to allow from landing um, to catching a train at King's Cross, we will have a dedicated episode uh, and a few episodes to talk about that. So how much time do I need then? I forgot the question. (laughs) Uh, um, It it depends on the individual really with this one because it depends on your mobility and how fast you move, whether you're checking in uh, baggage as well. Obviously, you have to wait for that one. But assuming you're reasonably able and you have checked in baggage, I would not be looking to book a train out of uh, King's Cross before sort of two and a half to three hours. All right. Okay. So um, it doesn't matter which way you cross London, I guess, to get to King's Cross with those options. No, you can choose whichever option you want. But um, you'd still give yourself that much time. You've got to. I mean, if you've just arrived and you know you're a bit tired from the plane, I, I. give yourself as much time as possible. You don't want to be stressed about crossing crossing London. Absolutely. And I will just say, for those of you wondering about um, getting around London itself, we do have podcast episode 24 where we discuss the different options around getting around London by you know, giving an introduction to the different public transport options. So that's worth a listen. So I'm going to be traveling around the UK by train. That's what I've decided. And so how soon in advance do I need to buy train tickets? Well, you can buy train tickets up until you, uh, the train leaves. 
Um, and you can actually buy some of them on, on board the train, but you will be paying full price. Yeah. Um, to say 90 days out is when you're going to start getting the good deals uh, for the advanced tickets, which we'll cover later. Um, but, yeah, up to sort of 90 days away from travel, you can start looking at ticket prices. But you need to do your homework on those. Okay, so um, we often get asked what the difference is between um, an advanced train ticket and an anytime train ticket. Could you explain that, please? So the advanced ticket is the, the one you buy for the best deal. This is the one that becomes available from around 90 days before you travel. But when you have the advanced ticket, you are restricted to catch that one particular train on that uh, on that day. That one time is mentioned for that train, and that's the one you have to catch. The any time one is to catch any train at that time, uh, so any train on that day on that particular route. But like with so many other things, the more flexible you want your ticket, the more you have to pay. Okay, so if I'm going to buy myself a train ticket or some train tickets for travel, what websites are the best to buy the train tickets on? Well, you have several options. You've got the uh, National Rail Inquiries, uh, you've got the Omeo, you've got Trainline, which are generic ticket uh, sales, and then you have train operating companies and the open access companies' specific websites. So for the train operating companies, you, you're looking at Avanti, Northern Rail, Southern um, LNER, then for the open access ones, you've got the Lumo and the uh, Grand Central. If I buy a train ticket, um, but I change my mind or something happens, is the train ticket, would they be refundable? If it's you that's cancelled the train ticket, unlikely, but possible, depending on the terms and conditions of that ticket sale. And there is slight differences between different companies. So you would need to check the, the small print or fine print on, okay. of those companies. If the train's been cancelled through no fault of your own, through weather, strikes, engineering works, if, they, if they're if they unable to put on a bus replacement service, that you may well be offered a, um, a refund if you want to. Okay. And then, so this is a, a question eight, I guess, is one of those questions that comes up, um, sorry, question seven, comes up really, really uh, often in the Facebook group where people think that train tickets sell out so i'm going to ask you that question i i, I know the answer to this one by name. i'm going to ask do train tickets sell out and why when i look at train site does it say there are no tickets for sale no advanced tickets for sale or sold out okay well the, firstly they do not sell out um, if anybody's used trains in the uk and they will find out that the train is absolutely packed with people and there's far more people on there than seats so to answer the question no the do not sell out of tickets. The second part of the question, when you're looking at ticket sites and it'll say no tickets available uh, or sold out, may possibly be because not all tickets have yet been released for sale. So depending on the company, one company may have already sold out of their allocation, another company, another site may not have done. Same with the train companies. So it pays to look across multiple sites and if there's more than one train operator on a site, have a look at those as well. If you don't know what the train companies are, have a look at one of the more generic sites, like the National Rail Inquiries, between two different uh, stations where you leave, want to leave from and two, and that will give a list of the train companies that uh, run on that line. Okay, so if I am going to book a ticket, um, and then do I, do I need to have a seat reservation, or can I just turn up for a train? So is it a compulsory thing? Um, to have a seat reservation. And also, I guess another question that comes up about seat reservation is, is that can I reserve specific seats on a train? So if I don't like, or if, for example, you don't like traveling yeah. backwards on a train. Yeah. So first of all, I guess that, that kind of questions in a few parts is, do I need the seat reservation? Can I just turn up? And if I do or can make a seat reservation, can I reserve specific seats? Now, firstly, you do not need a seat reservation. The, it's only the, really the sleeper services which they say you have to have a seat reserved uh, for the seating part of the sleeper service. So, no, you, you, as long as you've got a valid train ticket, you can just turn up for your train. You do not need a seat reservation. And if you do want to make a seat reservation, you can send any staffed office or through some of the train sites you can have a look at um, a seat layout of the train and you can select your specific seats. You're right. I do prefer mm -hmm. to go forwards because yeah. I want to see where I'm going. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then 
there are obviously there are a few train passes available in the UK. So you've got Brit Rail um, passes or Global Eurail train passes. Do you feel that they're worth it? And if I do decide to buy a pass, because we know there's quite a few different types, particularly Brit Rail passes, how do I reserve seats if I have a pass? Okay, so the first part of that question is they are expensive. Yes, yes, uh, they are. There's no yeah. misunderstanding there. The Brit Rail and the Global Eurail orbit they can save you money, but it depends on how long the train journeys you are wishing to take. Right. And how flexible, because they've got, they have flexible uh, variants. So those who, you know, we were looking at before, yeah. you get the M pass, you've got mobile passes. And, yeah. And they can work out well for you, but it's about doing that cost comparison for all the journeys you're planning on doing. Uh, to get um, a, a cost, an approximate cost of what your train tickets would be if you're buying them point to point yep. or with a pass. Because if you're only doing very short train journeys, the likelihood is it's not going to be worth getting the pass. Right. But they do give you massive amounts of flexibility. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, actually. Um, I, was, I was just thinking that. I mean, that's yeah. the advantage of that is you can kind of hop on and hop off that day without having to think about it. That's right. So it, it's about what you want from the yeah. train journey. Yeah. Do you want... You know, is a train just to get from A to B, or is it integral to your your holiday, your vacation? Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's, it's about a personal personal preference, really. And as regards to reserving seats for the passes, they do not come with many um, fee reservations. Yeah, they, it's one, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. generally one, yeah. and which I do recommend you use for your first journey. Right. Okay. If you want to reserve any future seats in the UK. Best to turn up at any uh, staff train station with a list of trains you'd like to catch, uh, along with your pass, obviously, and just choose your seats okay. uh, because they are then free. I was going to say that's you, not going to cost you anything. Yeah, you it? don't need yeah. to be paying unless you really have to. Yeah. And, you know. I know, no, we've we've mentioned that to quite a few people in, in that's right. their itinerary consults and have done that and found that it's just so yeah. much easier and also saves you money. And what certain train journeys, you know, when we sort of suggest they sit on this side of the train or on that side of the train for the best view, yeah. um, you know, and if you can choose your seats, all the better. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. So another question we get asked is what are split train tickets? Uh, split t- train tickets are, uh, use an example, uh, King's Cross to um, Edinburgh Waverley in yeah. Scotland. Uh, they've got the beautiful city of York on, on route on that one. So you may get X prize for a train ticket from London to Edinburgh, but potentially it can be cheaper for you to buy a single ticket from uh, London to York and then a further ticket for an ongoing journey. Right, from York to Edinburgh. Yeah, and it can potentially work out cheap. You can, you do also don't have to change trains. Right. You can uh, stay on that same train. Oh, right, okay, that's yeah, good to yeah, know. And yeah. I, know, I know when I've looked on the train line, that, that comes up as an option as well. It, yeah. It's all about doing your, your, uh, your ticket homework. Yeah. Because you've got to look at all these different options, yeah. Time spent can save you quite a bit of money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and everybody's looking to save money, yeah. obviously, because yeah. it's pretty expensive um, yes, to travel the UK right, by yeah. train. Um, which brings me, actually, to the next question that we get asked about um, a lot, uh, which is what are the national rail cards? Uh, that's a good one, because the national rail cards are uh, cards issued uh, by UK railways, which you never used to be able to get if you're for overseas visitors, but you can, you can now. Uh, for example, there's two uh, two together mail card, which we've sort of recommended for quite a few people. There's uh, senior citizens, there's uh, students, there's 16 to 25, the young persons rail time cards, all lots of different options available. And what they will do is you pay one fee um, and then you can get 30% off your train tickets. Okay, that's good. So. But Are there little, restrictions with that, though? Or? Yeah, certain ones. You have to check, the, again, the small print on because some of them you can't travel during peak hours. Uh, so it's off-peak travel only. And, and obviously, like, something like the two together, you have to be together. <laughs> yes, you do have to stay together. You have to yeah. stay, stay together for those, okay. yeah. And then on transfer, where you can't give it to somebody else. Right, so. okay. So what age does a child fare become an adult fare for train travel in the UK? That's a short answer. 16. Okay, so age 16 at that point, yeah. it becomes an adult fair. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then another question that we are asked often is, uh, and I know we've put photographs in the, in the mm. Facebook group, mm. is how much luggage can I take on a train? Okay, well, <laughs> luggage, you, you need to be able to lift it yourself. That's because you've got to lift it from the platform to the train. But the, 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 the guidelines say up to three pieces of luggage, and amazingly, no one dimension of that luggage can exceed one meter. 
Right. That's which is which is quite a bit of luggage. I'm not sure how you'd carry three pieces of luggage each, you know, just under a metre. <laughs> That's quite quite a lot. Yeah, and I'm not sure where you're going to store them on board some trains. So, so okay. Um, yeah, but if you obviously just want regular luggage when you take it off, yeah. you've got options. You have, and you've got the options on board with behind seats, luggage racks and stacks and overhead. Okay, cool. Next question. We do get asked this, and um, it's uh, about any recommended UK rail itineraries that we can share. And um, I, I can answer this one because I guess I'm in charge of the website, is that, yes, we do have the Best of Britain by rail two-week itinerary. You can make it longer if you wish. And we actually have had a number of people on the Facebook group who have actually done our two weeks uh, Best of Britain by rail itinerary. And we've actually just added to that recently by uh, with a uh, Best of Scotland rail itinerary. So you can take that, um, which Doug wrote, you can take the the Best of Britain itinerary and then at, at Edinburgh, then you can pick up the Best of Scotland by rail itinerary, which takes you back to Edinburgh, which again, then you can pick up the Best of Britain uh, rail itinerary, which will take you back down to London. So yes, we've got that. And also in our Guide to UK Train Travel ebook, there are also 10 uh, rail itineraries, which Doug wrote with maps and each of the destinations along the routes with um, links to all the travel guides for each of those places and recommended places to stay and more information. So actually you can build your uh, rail itinerary, UK rail itinerary using those in the ebook and also the information we have on the website. Question 15 is, do you have information about the Eurostar and Caledonian sleeper? So yeah, we have Articles, we have articles about the Eurostar and we have an article about the Caledonian Sleeper. And we also have um, two podcasts. So um, episode 40 is all about the Eurostar and episode five is about the Caledonian Sleeper. So if those are two train services that you are considering taking when you are over in the UK, I highly recommend that you take a look at those articles and listen to the podcasts. Okay, there's also the... There's the Riviera Sleeper as well, so yes. we should be an upcoming article about the sleeper service from London Paddington down to Penzance. Yeah, but uh, I haven't done that one yet. No, nope, so. that's, that's one for the future panel. It's a great <laughs> Western Railway service. Yeah, yeah, so we're doing that. So so we hope that's answered. It's like 15 of the most commonly asked questions we were asked about UK train travel. You know, I have mentioned, obviously, there are other podcasts worth listening to. Episode two is, is a Tips for Travel in the UK by Train episode that uh, Doug did. We've got um, episode 11, which is how to get around the UK, which we talk about different transport op- options, including train travel. Um, and then episode 26 is how to get from London to Edinburgh by train. As I say, we will be in a future episode doing the how to get from Heathrow to um, Edinburgh by train, um, which will kind of link up to that podcast episode too. So really for this week, I just want to say um, thanks for listening, that you can, as always, find links to all of the different podcast episodes and the articles we talked about and the ebook. Um, and we have a lot of uh, a lot of information on the website about UK train travel. You can find all of that in the show notes, which you'll find at uktravelplanning.com forward slash episode 43. Um, But for that this week, I think that just leaves us both to say... Happy Happy UK UK Travel Travel Planning. Planning!